Matt from uh, Las Vegas. Welcome to the program, Matt. Uh, hey, Sam. How you doing? I'm doing good. How you doing? Uh, I'm living, you know. Great. Uh, I, I'm here to uh, accept your challenge to libertarians. All right. Great. So, yeah. So, uh, I'd like to start out with, uh, I, th- I think there's a gross misunderstanding of what the word libertarian actually means. It okay. just means you believe in free will over determinism, which like all comes from, you know, the classical enlightenment pyramid, period, you know, where people were actually waking up to uh, that destiny in the church weren't really um, true. You could actually control your own mind in the way that you wanted, you know. Okay. I, th- I, think, I think that's where... Well, the let's talk about political. Liber- from, let's talk about political libertarianism in the, in this country. Um, how does that? Okay. How does that uh, translate into uh, what you think uh, should happen in the context of our politics? Well, I think um, I think uh, the Libertarian Party is a gross misrepresentation of what actually it means. You know. They, they, all right. uh, but I'm asking. Like, I mean, all right. Yes, I know. I mean, every. I mean, most libertarians who actually um, know what they're talking about uh, tell me that, and I, I accept that. Um, but uh, so specifically, what? Uh, I mean, how does this translate to politics? Because I mean, I I appreciate that libertarianism is a philosophy that uh, you know, a, a free will and whatnot. That's. That's great, but I mean, uh, where the rubber meets the, meets the road, uh, what do you think that we should not have taxes? Do you think that there should not be a government? Uh, what do you think the role of government should be? Well, I, I think I think that uh, it shouldn't be a monopolist, uh, like a monopoly on law creation. That it should be more of a polycentric type thing, you know. And, and where uh, cities really rule themselves, and it's more of a direct democracy instead of a representative democracy we have right now. Well, now I let guess, me ask. I guess more of like a social libertarian, I suppose. Why do you think that uh, would be more I, effective? Well, well, my my idea on it, which you know, it's just my idea that uh, the, that if uh, you have multiple organizations that can create law, people who want to like infect the law with corruption can't get to the entire system. If you can't get to the entire system, you can't affect everybody with it. You know. Well, I mean, do you think, let me ask you this, if you had a bunch of, uh, I mean, let's say you had, I mean, I guess, I mean, I guess that that's true, Uh, people would only corrupt those places where there was value for them to corrupt it, right? But let's say across the country, I mean, we've run this experiment, at the very least, right? I mean, wasn't the Confederacy, that was the idea that, uh, you know, at one point we realized, like, hey, you know, this is, we're going to be able to do this better. If we become, uh, if we have a federal well, government, but but be that as it may, let's just assume that we have, I don't know how many entities you're talking about in a country of 300 million people. I mean, what are you talking about? Like a million entities, uh, 300 people each, well, or 500,000? Well, like every every town, every city sets their own laws and regulations. Okay, but this is this is of course utopic, and I think it's not possible right now. Right. You know? Especially so, but, in our current social capitalist culture. Okay, well, here's the problem: is that I think it is. Okay. I think the 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 uh, that vision is utopic. But the problem is, is that en route to that utopic uh, vision, short of that, I think is a disaster. Uh, because all you're doing is um, increasing the power of capital in those situations, and you will, uh, I think corporations find it far easier to corrupt uh, smaller entities, um, uh, frankly. Mm. You know, you can see it on, like, uh, you, you can see it in uh, states like Pennsylvania, where, you know, with fracking. Uh, I think that, um, you know, the, the worst impact of Citizens United is going to be felt in the states and in congressional races. Uh, because you're going to see a tremendous amount of corporate money rush in uh, and really change the outcome of, of these races. You're going to see the way that it changes the outcome of legislation in states. Well, yeah, well, we're seeing, we're seeing that right now, you know, with the presidential debate, with the presidential race and everything. 
Well, I, so I think it's more, even uh, less so. I think it's e yes. I think it becomes even more heightened given the smaller less. entities that you have. Hmm. Well, I, I can understand, but well, you, there there has to be you know a transitional phase to a utopia. Always, like you know, the communism, their socialism, you know, the transition and or anarcho capitalism, I guess, if you want to call it that. Uh, you have to have a transition period, you know. Well, Can't now describe to me how long and what the transition period to this utopia is, and um, what do you do about poor people with these utopians? Nothing is that is it just like um, it's just every man, woman for himself, kids. Well, well, the only the only way we're ever going to come about this utopia is if there's perfect abundance, you know, which right now we don't have because of war and aggression and like that. Well, do you think so that we also don't have perfect, perfect abundance, abundance because there's limited amount of resources? I mean, let me ask you this. I mean, well, look, yeah, but we, and we use well, right. like look, look, look at the military budget: six hundred billion dollars. It it costs about three thousand dollars per person to feed them for a whole year. You know. With a, and there's a billion people on the planet that are chronically hungry. So you can, in essence, feed a whole lot more of them if you stop spending all the capital and all your resources on uh, mil militaristic wars of aggression and just uh, pr promoting your uh, imperialist agenda like we have been over the past several years. No, you look, know? well, several years. I mean, I think we've been imperialist for, uh, I mean... Gosh, um, almost since the, I would say, the founding of this country. Um, you know, I mean, the, well, yeah, that's ask the a, whole manifest destiny, like man needs to conquer right. everything. I mean, ask the people who lived here before us. I mean, the, uh, but, uh, but, okay, look, obviously there are some things that we agree upon in terms of policy. I would love to see our military budget reduced significantly and that money spent in other areas. Well, and um, but I, I just don't understand what is it exactly do, does your does your philosophy does your political beliefs have any relevance in our society as it exists today or do you just you basically are waiting until we get to perfect abundance and we're going to kick in this utopia because look if we get to perfect abundance how do I I would also like to get to like you know, perfect everything else, and then, you know, let's have this debate at that time. I may be in full agreement with you, but I don't see any of this as possible. I mean, this is a problem. I mean, you seem like a smart guy, uh, and uh, obviously you thought about this stuff, but I'm interested in it from a political perspective, and nothing that you're saying well, seems to me to be uh, workable in the real world. Well, I, th I think the first progression that we have to make is we need to get our monetary system back on a commodity-based system so we can have de a deflationary environment instead of an inflationary environment. Because in a deflationary environment, prices are always dropping, which will empower the consumer. You know, pe you know just average shows like you and me. Well, wait a just, second, uh, be Matt. Wait a little yeah, bit listen. and have our money worth more. First off, first off, deflationary environment is also going to uh, disempower the worker. And so anybody who works for a living, for the most part, is going to see their wages drop. Well, yeah. Anybody who has a student loan, anybody who has a student loan, anybody who has a loan uh, is also hurt in a deflationary environment. Well, that's if you, um, if you continue with the, you know, fractional reserve banking system, you know where the, the loans actually have interest on it and stuff. like. Uh, wait, so before we're going to push this, people. wait, so, hold on. So wait a second. So we, you, you want to go back to, what is it, a gold standard? Well, it's just a, a commodity-based money, you know. It, I don't care what commodity. It really doesn't matter. Well, let's just say gold, that because that seems to be the most popular on, on. one, because uh, it's not going to degrade. I guess lead degrades or uh, or whatever it is. But um, we go to this gold standard. You're aware that during the gold standard, there was a lot of a lot more volatility, right? I mean, you don't care about that. That's not relevant to you. The the volatility, the uh, the highs and lows, well, the, we're, the we're, severe we're deprivation. Totally abstraction. I don't think. I'm not talking abstraction. You can, you can that, go that, back that was, in history. That was like pre-really industrialization of the world, you know. 
Okay, so you're saying that now, um, under a gold standard, what would happen? We would have more deflation, and that would be good for people? Well, for the, like, for retired people and people who, um, <clears throat> who are actually saving money instead of losing their money over time, which is what inflation does, you know, it's increasing the money supply, which inevitably lowers the amount that your dollar is actually worth. So if you save under a deflationary environment, your money will actually be worth more over time. No, yes, I get sense? that. I get, no, I mean, I, I get that. I mean, that's assuming that you continue to earn uh, the same amount of money, right? I mean, the reason why it works yeah. for seniors is because of Social Security, uh, because they will, they will not have a reduction in uh, their, their, I mean, their money, assuming, of course, that the libertarians haven't gotten rid of Social Security at that point because it's a reliance on state. But uh, their, their people's well, I wages... Don't, I don't think the state is inherently evil. Like, that's just, that's just bad philosophy, you know? Every, there's a state everywhere. Everywhere, pretty much. So maybe Antarctica. So it's thinking that it's the epitome of evil is just the wrong way of looking at the issue. Right. What, what I, what I, what I want to do is to get rid of this um, institutionalized violence that we're all subjected to, you know? Well, yeah, like, I you, guess. You just want it to be more random violence? I mean, was there something better about well, uh, what, violence well, when it what was... Are, what it requires is, like, actual enlightenment for the population we need, the class consciousness to actually increase. You know? Yeah. I mean, I think... Listen, I right, mean, right, now, Matt, right now, the proletarians are pretty much asleep. Look, you know? Yeah. I mean, Matt, I get, I get some of what you're saying here, and I appreciate uh, uh, what, what you're getting to, but, um, you know, it, it's, it really... I, I I talk about things that are a little bit more tangible and practical and possible, and you have it seems to me uh, libertarians of very ilk have basically utopia, and then some very very vague notion oh, yeah, of I, what happens I, I, and I, root yeah, to I that. Well, that's fine, but what happens and root to it is dystopia. And I don't think we can get to utopia. And so uh, the uh, utopia where, uh, that you're, taught, you're imagining, really all it ends up leading when it actually becomes uh, in, in some way imposed practically, it only leads to tremendous uh, deprivation for a, uh, a vast majority of people. That's the reality. Well, I it's not like this type of system hasn't been tried in history. You know, the Native Americans, which were the most peaceful people on the planet before being conquered, you know, abided by this entire principle. Which principle? First of all, first of all, I mean, there was actually uh, a, a fighting amongst Native Americans. There was also um, a lot more well, uh, room for for people yeah, to roam. But what is it exactly that they did they um, did they do that we should be uh, adopting? Well, it was it was direct democracy, unlike you know, as I said before, like the representative democracy we have now, where there was um, the chief wasn't the chief; he was the first among equals, and I think that that is what you know democracy truly strives for when applied properly. Yeah, you I know? don't think that we can do we that can't. with three hundred million people. Well, why not? I, I don't think it's practical in this day and age. I think we don't live in an agrarian, uh, tribal um, uh, world. I mean, the idea of, of sort of everybody voting, that would be great. Um, I, I just don't think that's, I mean, everybody voting on every decision, I just don't, I just don't think that's going to work. Now, of course, I don't know that women got to actually participate in that direct democracy you're talking about. Um, I, you know, I'm not sure. I'm sure there were some societies where they did, but my guess is they didn't. Uh, so I'm not even sure that you saw that with Indian tribes, right? Well, you know, I, I, I don't, I don't actually know what your, no specific question you're, the answer to it, so... 
Yeah. Uh, well, let, well, look into it. Look into it. All right. All right. Appreciate the call, Matt. Appreciate it. Can I, can I just read you a quote before you, uh, <clears throat> before you hang up? Just, it's, it's from a Native American chief, and I wanted to read it to you. Okay. Is that cool? How long is it? All right, it's from, uh, it, it, it's just a couple sentences. It's from okay. John Fire Lane Deer. Okay. He says, before our white brothers arrived to make us civilized men, we didn't have any kind of prison. Because of this, we had no delinquents. Without a prison, there can be no delinquents. We had no locks nor keys, and therefore among us there were no thieves. When someone was so poor that he couldn't afford a horse, a tent, or a blanket, he would in that case receive it all as a gift. We were too uncivilized to give great importance to private property. We don't know any kind of money, and consequently the value of human being was not determined by his wealth. We had no written laws laid down, no lawyers, no politicians. Therefore, we were not able to cheat and swindle one another. We were really in bad shape before the white man arrived. I don't know how the white man, or I don't know how to explain how we were able to manage without these fundamental things that they, so they tell us, are so necessary for a civilized society. Yeah, I'm down with that. I love it. I, um, I, I mean, I, 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 I love it, and I appreciate that. And I wish, you know, in many respects, that um, maybe uh, that type of system uh, was possible. I'm not sure. I, I'm not sure if uh, if things were better off. But I would love uh, uh, some of that in our society. But the, the sad reality is, is that um, you can't go backwards in time. And um, right. If I could, I would, right? If I could, I would. <laughs> exactly. All right, take it easy. Good luck on that journey. All right, have a nice day, Sam. Okay, bye-bye. I also have to wonder, you know, technology and medicine was a lot a lot less... Uh, well, I mean, your you average know. age at that point was about 35. <laughs> I mean, I would be dead. Um, <laughs> and, I mean, let's, let's be honest. I mean, I, you know, I think there's aspects of... Um, of that society that were fine. I mean, I think, but he doesn't really know what he's talking about. Like, if you haven't thought about the implications of, you know, Native Americans, they had slaves. Uh, Native Americans did not perceive as not uh, members of other tribes necessarily as actually being humans like them. Uh, Native Americans were actually you know, they didn't have necessarily guns until we gave them, but that didn't mean that they didn't have wars, uh, that they didn't fight for resources at different times. Uh, I don't know what to tell you.